Okay, so here's the original wig. It's more of a honey blonde caramel type of color, very brassy, which is what I do not want in this new wig. Coloring the bundles is going to be much easier than doing it on the wig, so we're going to cut that right out. Here's everything that you will need. Aluminum foil, three packs of the BW powder, two packs of the Wella Color Charm in T18, two different um, bottles of the Bella We're going to use those for two different things. And then, of course, brushes, gloves, scrunchies, the mixing bowl, and the brush that you're going to apply the um, processing equipment with. We're gonna start off using the developer in 30. I want it to color a little bit faster so I don't have to keep it on as long. And it's already blonde, so I know I should reach the color that I want quickly. I'm gonna use one pack of the BW, but not all at once. So we're gonna take um, just a little bit less than half out and put it inside of the mixing bowl. And then we're gonna start to add the developer and just use a good amount of that, not too much because I want to um, not be able to like to be forced to put in the whole pack. I want to do it like a slow type of process. Using a any kind of spoon, I'm using a, a spork. I don't know how I had that, but you can go ahead and start mixing. And as I said before, you're going to add in more BW powder as need be to get the texture that you like. I know a lot of people like a more creamier texture. I prefer something more on the liquid side because it spreads better. So the creamier it is, is going to process faster, but I prefer it to be just like this because it's going to spread more. And I'm more concerned with that because there's been times where I am dying and then I run out of powder or developer and I had to go outside and we don't want that to happen today. So we're gonna let this spread. Comb your bundles just to make sure there's no kinks inside of it to make sure everything is going to be dyed nice and evenly. The best way to do this is using a wide tooth comb, which is what I'm using right now. Starting, of course, you're going to start at the bottom always. For me, I like it to start at the proce uh, processing at the bottom because it's already lighter. So the way the look that I'm going for, I want it to be real ashy blonde up top. And then when you're getting to the ends, I will want it to be nice and platinum more color of gray and white color so you want the bottom to process the longest for you to achieve that as you get higher and higher with the dye just make sure everything is as even as you can i usually don't do it all the way to the top because making a wig a lot of that area is going to be hidden but um sometimes you can just get up there just in case you never know what can show make sure you are combing the bundles while you're dyeing it because you don't want to miss up any little hidden kinks that was in there that you ended up not dying because you didn't comb it now it's flipped over you're going to do the same exact process to the other side Now we're flipped back to the first side that I processed. We're gonna do the second layer, but this one is gonna be a little bit different. As we're layering it, I'm gonna open up the bundles like so to get all the pieces that I would have missed. Already you can see that there's so much that's completely dry, has no dye on it whatsoever. So you need to do this to make sure you're getting every single thing. We're gonna do this on both sides and repeat until you feel like everything has dye on it. Once we're all done and it's double processed on both sides, we're gonna go ahead and tuck it inside of the foil paper. Nothing too fancy. Flip the hair and do the tucking. Once that's all done, we're gonna move that to the side and start working on the next one.
when the bundles are tucked tightly into the foil paper more heat goes to it which makes it process faster which is why it's better to do it nice and tight we're gonna let both of those sit for 30 minutes then we're on to the closure this is a silk based closure so I don't have to worry about getting bleach onto the knots and having it over process the knots because there's like a barrier between it which is gonna be much easier for me love a nice silk closure for this reason Doing the closure is the same as the bundles. We're gonna start at the ends and um, process it. <laughs> that was my author fist because it was like flipping and doing all types of nonsense, but I got it together eventually. Go ahead and just start from the bottom, work your way up to the top. And when we get to the top, that's when things are gonna get a little bit different. Go ahead and flip it to the other side. Make sure you're always remembering to comb the hair throughout. We're gonna do the same process here, starting at the bottom and getting up to the top. What's different with this is gonna be making sure you're gonna to get to the little nooks and crannies around the closure to make sure, even though it's flipped on the other side and you may think, oh, you're not gonna see this side. You will, because you might switch your part up and do certain things and then that brassiness is gonna be screaming when everything else is chilling, being cool and ashy. When it comes to the top of the closure, I'm gonna be a little bit more delicate. So I'm gonna take the brush and just do nice little soft strokes onto, um, you know, the roots parts. I don't really want any dark roots. I don't have dark roots, period, because the color before was already blonde. Here's my little secret, which might not be so big of a secret, but I use a really small um, comb just to brush through it because that way everything is 100% even. And if I did want roots, it helps with that too. Just using the comb and just combing through it makes everything just come out a little bit nicer. The way that I tuck the closure is gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna do the ends part tighter because it really doesn't matter when it comes to that part of the hair. But when we're doing the beginning of the closure, we're not gonna do that one as tight because I don't want it to crush it and then the color gets a little bit different. So we're gonna leave this amount of space when it comes to the top. It'll still process, so don't worry. And we're gonna let that one sit for a cute little 30 minutes. This is how it looks after 30 minutes. Nice and yellow, but I have a feeling I can get it to be lifted even higher, so we're gonna let that sit for another 30. So after one hour and 30 minutes, these are the results. It was exactly what I wanted, nice and yellow. You can only achieve the ash blonde color with toner, so this is what you want the hair to look like after lifting it with the bleach. Now we're moved on. I just washed it with a regular shampoo and um, I'm gonna just towel dry it to get it ready for the toner. As with everything else, always comb the hair out. That's the only way everything's gonna be nice and even. And then we'll begin the process with the toner. We're gonna begin with the closure first because I want that part to be the ashiest, but you can see how brassy it is, that's a no-no. We're gonna use the toner to definitely make that nice and ash blonde. This time we're gonna use a developer in 20 because you don't need it to actually lift as high as you want it to lift with the um, bleaching process. And we're gonna use an entire pack of the Wella Color Charm in T18. Just go ahead and pour that whole bottle in. As the instructions say, you wanna go ahead and use one whole bottle and then put twice as much developer in there. You kinda of have to just eye it. I'm not gonna actually go ahead and do the numbers, but me eyeing it, it didn't work out too bad. So if you just look at it, this is the amount that I did a little bit slowly to make sure everything just didn't flop out and then you're just like, what's happening? That's a pretty much a good amount. Then you go ahead and mix it with the spoolie again. The spoolie, I'm so used to doing makeup with the spork that I have or a spoon, whichever one that you're gonna use to do your mixing. 
Once it's mixed, this is the opposite of the developer. So the developer, I like this to be nice and liquidy. With this toner, you want it to be clumpy, like gel-like. Fill it, and then you know that is right based on how the texture feels. With this, you don't have to be as precise as you were with the developer. You're gonna go ahead and put the toner all over. It really doesn't matter how it is. Of course, you always wanna be as even as you can, but it doesn't matter as much as it did before with the developer. After only a few minutes, the hair and my gloves have turned purple, so we're done. We can put that to the side and start with the bundles. We're gonna do the same process. No rocket science here. We're just gonna go ahead and pour the toner on the way you would do, I don't know, a rinse. Nothing too precise. What we are gonna do is do the whole little separation trick that I did when we were developing to make sure everything gets the color. If there is some yellow brassiness left, I won't be completely upset because I like the mention. So I would like to see the ash tones with the um, a little mix of beige, which is what the yellow would end up being. It wouldn't be anything too crazy. Look at my babies changing and becoming the right color and everything like that. Like, ain't nothing like dyeing your hair and then actually doing what it's supposed to do. Look how nice and gray and purple this closure is. I know when I wash it out, it's just gonna be delicious. You need to make sure that everything is colored. So as you see, I did a little separation trick and I see a lot of brassiness in that closure. I'm gonna use Shimmer Light's Purple Shampoo to get rid of any brassiness that I might have missed. Conditioning my hair overnight has it super soft and prepared to take any heat that I'm going to put onto it. After all that processing, it needed this type of treatment for sure. Normally, I would let the hair air dry, especially after all that processing, but I had to make this wig now. Therefore, I had to blow dry it, which is why it looks a little dry and frizzy, but once I flat iron it add some oils, it'll be just fine. As for the color, I'm very satisfied. It's nice and ash blonde, which is what I wanted. Here's young Yonsei. Love the results. See how the bottom is nice and highlighted with extra little platinum. If you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave any questions, comments in my comment section.